My name is Scott Grant and I'm a Fujifilm ex-photographer from Newfoundland in Canada. We had a big sporting event here a week back. It's called Race on the Rock. It's snowmobile uphill drags and a big snowcross event spanning the course of a weekend. I shot it last year with the XF 100-400, but I was quite curious about the XF 200mm F2. So I reached out to Fujifilm Canada about a month ago and asked if I could borrow it. And they were kind enough to send one down. So I'll share with you a few of my thoughts, opinions, uh, what I think of the construction of this lens, um, some of its features and that sort of thing. And I think what we'll do, we'll start right at the front of the lens and we'll work our way back. So first off, with all these super telephotos, you get this big monstrous lens hood. It's lined with felt inside and right here. Uh, let's see if I can turn this. Yep. So inside here is lined with felt so you don't get any stray light bouncing around coming into the camera. That's pretty standard with a typical super telephoto. Um, right here underneath, uh, yeah, let's see if I can turn this up. Yeah, there we go, right here. So this is a little window that you can pop open. Uh, if you have a polarizer, you can actually adjust the polarizer from right here when you're done. Close it up. And that, that's on the bottom so you won't get any stray light coming in, coming in through there. Uh, pretty standard locking knobs, actually a little nicer than the one that was on my Nikkor back in the day. Um, the tip of this is lined with rubber. I know a lot of them, they do this, and it's, like if you're on a basketball court or even here in the grass or anything like that, you can take the lens, stand it up on its end, and it, it lays on this perfectly. I know all during Race on the Rock, I just lay the lens down in the snow, this part down, and pick it up, and I just shoo, rub the snow off, and I was ready to shoot again. Um, right here we have four buttons. One, two, three, four, and these are linked to this preset system right here. And what's up is, depending on what you select, AFL means autofocus lock. So if you're using the camera and your hand is underneath here and you want to lock the focus, you just press one of the four buttons and it will lock it instantly. If you set it to autofocus, which is on the opposite side on the right, you press one of these buttons, the camera will autofocus, or sorry, the lens will autofocus. And the last one, which what I think is the coolest and the neatest feature is called preset. And the easiest example is say if you were shooting baseball and you set this to preset, if I were to aim and focus at second base, I could press the set button and that would dial in that focus distance to all these buttons. So then I could shoot shortstop, first base, outfield, whatever the heck it is if I needed to get back to second base instantly press that button, boom, the focus auto automatically remembers it and shoots right back to second base, so I think that's brilliant. Um, up top we have the limiter switch, so we have full, it'll, it'll, it can move through its entire focus range, or this is limiting it from 5 meters or approximately 15 feet out to infinity, and of course it's going to work better, it's going to work faster if it's in here because it doesn't have to move through its entire focusing range but uh, obviously you can't focus at minimum focusing distance if you do that. Um, OIS, this thing is rated for five full stops of stabilization and I tell you, it bloody well does that. Um, I've been shooting this with the X-H1 which also has in-body image stabilization and I can shoot this thing down to one fifteenth of a second handheld uh, and that's pretty impressive for a big chunk of glass like this which would normally probably be one three hundredth or one four fiftieth or something like that, like a much higher shutter speed, but one fifteenth of a second handheld. And that, that's pretty darn impressive. Um, aperture ring is on the lens. There's only a few Fujifilm lenses that don't have an aperture ring built into the lens. Um, and this one does, thankfully so. I do wish that the ring was a little stiffer. Uh, I think on a super telephoto and the type of weight that you're holding in your hand, you're going to be using your left hand like this, cradling the lens underneath and switching this with so much weight in your hands it becomes very easy to move this. If you happen to move the lens against your hand you can easily bump this up. Uh, so I wish that ring was just slightly, slightly stiffer. However, it's not a big deal. I can live with it. Um, this is really nice. My, I've never seen any super telephoto that had this. It, it may exist. I don't know. I don't know if Fujifilm is the first to do it, but it certainly makes my day easier. You will be rotating this from vertical to landscape orientation when you're on a tripod or a monopod. There's no doubt about it. And this thing has a little indent 
right there, bang, there's an indent, and it, it just stops. You know that you've turned the lens 90 degrees. Lock it down, it's beautiful. And same thing, you keep twisting, boom, you can feel the indent. You know you're there right away. I mean, I, I don't know why they don't put that in every super telephoto. It just makes absolute sense. Uh, the finish on it, the finish overall, it's not white, it's, it's pearl, they call it. And it's beautiful. I tell you, it's not white like or off-white like the Canon lenses. It's not like the Nikon lenses, a gray or charcoal or black or whatever the heck it is. It's like a, a whitish silver. It's beautiful. And the idea behind it, I guess, is to dissipate heat so the heat doesn't affect the image quality of the lens. How much effect it can have on it, I have no idea. But and if it works, it's good. But it's also hot. I mean, like I said, you walk into a room with this thing and, and people take notice. There's no doubt about that. Um, more value for your money. Here's value for your money, right here. I've never seen a super telephoto lens that has an Arca Swiss foot built in. I believe Olympus might make a few. I've had a 300mm f4 from Nikkor, a 500mm f4. Um, right now, I, I, from my 70 to 200s back in my Nikon days, I use them currently on my 50 to 140 and also my 100 to 400. I have to use plates. So I have to buy an additional plate with an Arca Swiss groove in it. It mounts to the bottom of the foot plate so I can mount it in my tripod. Well, this thing comes with it already built in. Look. Boom. It's right there. Now, that's value for your money. That's that's a $100 feature right there. If you go out and buy a super telephoto lens, one of the first things you're going to do is either put a plate on the bottom of this or replace the whole foot. So to have this already done, it's fantastic. And I, honestly, I can't see why more manufacturers don't do that. I think it's brilliant. Uh, what else we got in here? It's weather resistant. I don't know how many seals and gaskets are in this thing, but it's designed to, to stay outside in inclement weather. I, you know, I wouldn't push it in a torrential downpour or anything like that. You know, I'd have a raincoat or something on it. But uh, but I'm certain you could go out in damp conditions and uh, and mist and, and minor rain and that, and you'd be more than fine. And the image quality on this thing is, well, I don't know, it's hard to describe it. Like most super telephotos, when you're when you're talking this kind of price range, I mean, you're, you expect the best. What can, you, what can you say? You want it to be sharp, almost wide open immediately, or you do want it to be sharp, wide open. And you want it to be sharp from corner to corner. You don't want chromatic aberrations. You don't want all these, I don't know. You want almost perfect image quality. You come to expect that when you're paying this kind of price for a lens. Uh, the price on this thing is $7,800 Canadian, if you're wondering. But what you get for that is incredible quality. I mean, this thing is super duper duper sharp, wide open at f2, from corner to corner. I think if you stop down to 2.8, you get a, a slight little difference in sharpness out of it, but it's, it's like splitting hairs. It really doesn't make a difference. Um, also included with this lens is a 1.4 times teleconverter. Fits in here. I should have had it on, I guess. I don't. Anyway, this is a paired teleconverter that comes in the bag. It comes right with the lens, so it makes this the equivalent of a, I think it's like a 280 f2.8, which is over 400 millimeter in 35 millimeter format. So you kind of get two lenses in one. And you add that teleconverter, which again is paired specifically for this lens, and you, I can barely see a difference in image quality. Like there may be a little tiny sliver of a difference, but it's not, not worth talking about. And the autofocus is still incredible. It's still, still light years ahead of everything. It's, it's amazing. So there's some serious value with this lens. Um, and it is expensive. There's no doubt, but you're getting the best of the best of the best of the best. In fact, I was so impressed that I did this. Bear with me for a minute. Hold on. So this is what I did. I was so impressed with this lens that I had to phone and order my own. Yep. That's my 200mm f2. Yep. Two lenses. I don't know how many of these are in Canada out there right now. I don't know how many people are shooting with them. But I can tell you, I have two right here, and uh, there's no way that I was sending this thing back to Fujifilm without having that in my bag. Not a chance. So anyway, thanks for hanging out and listening to me for a few minutes. I hope you enjoyed my thoughts on it, and uh, we'll see you next time.